Hello, welcome to another video by LSX Engines Tuning Marine. In this video, I'm documenting the uh, part three of the teardown of a uh, Mercruiser 5.0 MPFI engine, multi-port fuel injection engine. Um, at this stage, we've got the uh, intake off, the, uh, all the valve train has been removed, bagged and tagged. Uh, each, uh, the tr like for example, this is one E, one exhaust, and all the components for one exhaust, the push rod, the rock arm, the the uh, the ball and the nut are all bagged up in one bag for one E. So each uh, each component of the valve train is bagged, and then we're now ready to the uh, the head bolts have been removed from the holes in the head, and uh, we're now ready to remove this head. Uh, when you remove head bolts, you go in the opposite order of the firing order, uh, not the firing order, the opposite order of the tightening sequence. So example, tightening one bolt is in the middle, so the last one is 17 on this end. So you start with 17, you can look up the tightening sequence on the internet, but you start with 17 and go backwards. So 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, so on. So you just go in the opposite direction of the tightening sequence when you loosen it, and you loosen each bolt, just crack a little time, and then go, th go through this, the series, and then come back and loosen a little more. I, I generally take about four stages I'm loosening so that, um, so that it doesn't uh, warp the head. That's the purpose of doing that. So. Um, at this time, we're going to pull off this, this, this cylinder head. This is the, uh, uh, what I consider the driver side. In this case, it would be the port side of the engine from the boat's perspective. And we're going to move this head and see what the condition is underneath. If there's anything uh, unique or interesting about the underside of this head, I'll show it in the video. All right, continue with the Mercruiser 5.0 MPFI teardown, part three. Um, Looks like there was a little bit of a head gasket blown between cylinders um, uh, three and five, the, the middle two on this bank. Um, this is on the uh, starboard side. Um, excuse me, this is on the port side. Um, it's not real bad blown head gasket, but there's definitely some traversing between the two cylinders based on the black soot looking stuff. This side is clear, nothing wrong there. Again, between seven and five, nothing wrong there except water in the cylinder, which did not come from a blown head gasket. And, uh, but this one had a little bit of a blown head gasket. It wasn't, I don't know if it was fully blown, but it was definitely leaking from one side to the other. So we get the other head off, we'll uh, video that and show what it looks like. All right, continue with the uh, Mercruiser 5.0 MPFI engine teardown. Um, we now have the uh, starboard engine off. And um, it is showing, uh, well, let me see, I call this the pasture side. Um, it's showing the possible blown head gasket on this side too. It's between some uh, four and six. You see how that's clear? That's clear. And there's some black smudging going on between these two. So I don't know if it's a fully blown head gasket, but there was, I think there was definitely some leakage between the two. Um, not to mention the water in the cylinders, but uh, that's a different issue. So this time we're going to um, continue working on tearing this thing down. And uh, the next time I'm going to remove the starter, the front uh, um, harmonic balancer. Uh, and then I will uh, remove the oil pan and flip it off, uh, flip, flip it upside down. So the next video will show this engine uh, probably in a state with the oil pan off and it flipped upside down. Continue with the Mercruiser 5.0 MPFI teardown. I'm uh, about to, well, I've already removed the harmonic balance right the front of the engine and um, I removed the oil, the oil, the remote oil filter adapter. And uh, I'm about to remove the oil pump and the windage tray and the oil dipstick. Um, and then I will take off the front timing cover and uh, work on the valve train. So stay tuned for that. Continue with the uh, Mercruiser 5.0 MPFI teardown. Just wanted to make a note, quick note on how these piston uh, rods are oriented. There's a tang on the outside edge of the rod that always faces away from the other rod. So this tang here the tang there, tang, tang, the tangs are as far apart from each other as you can get on the rod. 
Just wanted to show that because that's that's critical. So I'm about to, I'm about to remove the piston and rod for cylinder number three. Looks like, and then I'll do four. So I'll pick it up after I get these two out. One of the tricks I like to do is um, you you can either put rubber sleeves around these bolts to keep them from contacting the uh, crankshaft journal. But what I like to do is use the old bearing and rotate it around, and that keeps this bearing between the crankshaft journal and that, the threads on this bolt. And if I tap on this bolt on the top side and I always push down and keep this bearing between it, this bolt won't hit, and it'll just push it right on out without touching the crank. So I use the old bearing as kind of a protector for the crank so that the bolt doesn't contact with it. It's a little bit faster than having to put the rubber sleeves on each time. Okay, continuing with the teardown of the uh, Mercruiser 5.0 MPFI engine. Um, I went a little long between videos this time, but uh, I'll basically describe what I did. So we've, we've removed each piston one at a time. And uh, the way I did it, and I identified the pistons, well, took them outside, I'll, I'll show you that later. But anyway, um, remove each piston one at a time, and now we remove the bearing caps, and we're at a problem, we, or we have an issue where the rear main seal won't come off back the back because the engine stands in the way. And there's this stud right here in the back of the engine that won't let this rear main seal lift out. So uh, as a going forward, not only do you need to take out the, the bolts that hold this rear main seal, you also need to take out that stud if you want to be able to get this out easily. So in order to get this crank out, we're going to have to take the entire engine, uh, this engine and the uh, stand bracket outside set on the bed of a or on the tailgate of a pickup truck and uh, pull this piece off the back before we can get this out and before we get the crank out. But in the meantime, I was going to pull out and crank the camshaft to make this thing lighter. And what I've discovered is that uh, this engine's been rebuilt before. The owner told me it was uh, rebuilt and they did not do a good job um, because they took a roller block and converted it into a flat tappet cam. And uh, what they've done is when they put this cam in, they didn't put a retaining plate back in. I got—I don't know if that's because the uh, they just relied on the, the timing gear to walk out and hit the back of the timing cover. I don't know. I'll, I'll check the timing cover in a minute. If it has any marks from the from the timing gear, that means they did not put a, it's called a cam button. Uh, if you don't put a retaining plate here, you're supposed to put a, if you convert an older block to a roller cam, you have to what, use what's called a cam button on the inside of the timing cover so that when this camshaft tries to walk out, it hits a stop and you want it wearing on one spot but um in this particular case i don't know that they did that i'll check in a minute but um i'm about to remove the cam to make this block lighter and um, to do that i put a five five sixteenths by uh, 18 bolt in the hole and use that as kind of a tool to help me work this cam out which is what i'm about to do now so this block's almost torn down in the next stage after we get this cam out and by the way the lifters are still in there too they haven't fallen out which is a sign that may have been the wrong lifter, but um, well, obviously they're the wrong lifter because they're not roller lifters in a roller block. But um, there was nothing sticking up, even when the cam is at the, even when the lifter is at its highest lift point, the, the roller the uh, lifter still doesn't stick out up past the uh, block. So I'm going to try to shake those out or by gravity or wrap on the block with a hammer and see if they fall out by gravity. All right, continue with the. Uh, Mercruiser 5.0 MPFI engine teardown. Um, I now have the crankshaft out and I'm um, exposed to the main bearings and I want to show you what, the, what I found. Um, this is the number one main bearing. It's got some uh, significant scoring in it, but it's still functional. Um, it's, it's definitely need replacing, but it wasn't gone yet. That's number one bearing. And obviously your, your lower halves, the halves that are in the caps, show the worst wear because that's where the load is pushed as the piston pushes down making power. This is number two, different story. Number two is uh, starting to go, starting to uh, melt. This is a, these are aluminum bearings, by the way. They're not tri-metal, they're called bimetal. And to me, they're not as good as the tri-metals. I don't know if it has anything to do with this bearing here, but um, this bearing is about to go. It's starting to show welding, uh, heat damage from the uh, bearing melting and, and welding spots on itself. If you look in here, this is the top half, and you can see the, there's one spot where it's, me it's melted, but it's also got spots where aluminum from the, the lower bearing has welded itself to the upper bearing. So um, this engine wasn't going to last much longer because of this bearing. Um, 
the reason I have this engine, the reason I'm rebuilding it, is that the owner, um, I'm not exactly sure how it happened. I, he was probably out on a business trip, and the car was leaking, and uh, some, somehow the, the uh, drain plug got left in the boat, and the boat filled with water, and the engine got submerged. So uh, the lesson learned is um, even though you got a cover on your boat, you probably want to take the drain plug out when you're along, uh, away for long periods of time. I'm just assuming and speculating. I'm not sure exactly what happened. But anyway, um, so this engine was submerged, and that's why I'm rebuilding it. And um, the fact it was not this, in other words, what I'm getting at is this damage was not caused by running it uh, after it had been submerged. Uh, the owner did not run this motor from the point it was submerged. He just cleaned it up and then sent it to me to get rebuilt. So this damage was not caused by the fact that I'm rebuilding it. This was, this was damage that, due to the, uh, the poor rebuild that was done before. And I don't know how many hours it's had on it, but it wasn't gonna last much longer. So this is another example of a, 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 a shoddy rebuild in the boat industry. Then you've got this, you know, this bearing here, again, not some scoring, not too bad, but it's, it does need replacing. And that scoring, if you see scoring like that, what you can do, also there's two marks on that bearing. I didn't do that, that was in here. So somebody had uh, marred up this bearing before it was even, uh, where I was rebuilding the motor. Um, the, uh, let me go to number four. Here's some more scoring there. What I was about to say, if you see scoring like this, you can take your fingernail and scrape the crankshaft or run your fingernail across the crankshaft like this. And if you feel, uh, if, you're, if your fingernail catches on ridges, the crankshaft needs to be turned to smooth it out. And uh, so this is going to have to, this crankshaft is going to have to be turned and smaller bearings put in. I don't think these are oversized bearings. They might be. Let me see. It says GM. Yeah, they say it says GM aluminum. It is oversized bearing. Hold on. Let me see if I can get a good picture of that. Let me get a stable shot of it. Oh, it's undersized by 0 .0006. So... It's pretty much a standard bearing that was uh, just a slight undersized. But this, the fact that it says AL, that's an aluminum bearing. And I, like I said, I like these tri-metal bearings. You know, they have, a, they have some copper in them or something. But anyway, um, there's, there's your number four bearing. Again, there's a tool mark on the side of that bearing. And uh, more scoring on number four. And then last, number, number five, there's your... Uh, this is your lower bearing half. Some deep scoring there and spots where the bearing is starting to come. Pieces of it breaking off and welding into the grooves. Again, number five on the upper half. So even though these bearings are not absolute terrible, it's that number two, it would still run for a little longer, but this engine was, uh, was on borrowed time. So that's all for the bearings. I want to show the main bearings and the condition of the main bearings. Oh, and the, the uh, rod bearings all consistently show a pattern of, this is the uh, upper half bearing on a rod bearing, one of the rod bearings. And you can see the pattern. It, it, it wears a, a spot right there because that's where the load, when the piston is pushing down, it puts that load on it. So these are all aluminum bearings too. They all show a similar type pattern like that. Let's go ahead and find another one. I didn't save them in the water, but they all show something similar to that right there. You see some scoring on that too. There's another rod bearing. It's got some scoring in it. So again, uh, just not the best rebuild. When I rebuild engines, I rebuild them using the tri-metal bearings. The best. I mean, obviously not. I don't buy the brace bearings, the $150 bearings, but I buy the tri-metal bearings, which are better. They're they're best quality for uh, stock use. So one other thing I want to show is my son taught me this trick. Um, this is the rear main bearing cap, and when it's seated down like this, with the crank in the way, it's kind of hard to get out. You can't wobble it side to side because these two sides here, here, and here are thrust thrust uh, flanges. So you can see the thrust flange on that bearing right there and right there. So you can't wobble it side to side. So what I was doing was putting the oil, put, take one of these bolts and move it to the oil pump bolt, putting it in the hole and just taking a, my, uh, either my palm or a hammer and right, lightly tapping on the side of this to break the, to kind of make the bearing pop, the uh, cap pop up like this. 
But my, my son, uh, I was showing him how to do it, and he drove this bolt in too far with a socket set. And as he was tightening it, it just, it just pushed the bearing cap right up off the bearing. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. How'd you do that? So as it turns out, if you look up under here, the hole for the oil pump bolt is, is drilled through and tapped through. So as you're threading this in, it's pushing further and further. So it just lifts this bearing cap right off the off the crankshaft. Now, obviously, this, this bolt is is uh, pushing against the back of the old bearing. So you might be damaging your old bearing, but who cares? You're going to replace that one anyway. Do not. I would not do this with a new bearing to remove this cap because you might do some. Obviously, you might do some uh, denning or warping or whatever. But on an old bearing, I wouldn't worry about it. So if you're you're doing plastic gauge and you got to torque this down and get it back off. Don't do not do this to get it back off on a new bearing. Just want to point that out. One other thing I found that's kind of that I'll do another video on. I found kind of a little issue mystery. Um, this front cover was one of the plastic Vortec covers. It, it has a, a crankshaft position sensor in it, so it's what they use. The plastic cover is what they use on the Vortex from '96 up. And I noticed that this gasket on the Vortec cover was not completely, it was not completely sealing against the surface of the block. You can see how this curve, right, this, this, this line right here is made by the factory seal in the cover. And it goes off the surface of the block and comes back. So it wasn't sealing right against this block. So, like I said, I just want to point that out, but I'm going to do another video on, on the analysis of that and see if this, see if this block's even functional. This customer has MPFI, so it has to have the crankshaft sensor to function. So if I can't find the proper cover that seals against this block, this block may not be reusable. Uh, like I say, the, the previous builder, this block to me is not the fact, it's not the original block. It's got some underlying paint on it, red paint. So they took a, a, a 305, maybe a truck engine or something and made it to a boat engine, which is fine. But the fact that it's got this red paint underneath the black paint tells me and there's some over you see how the black was overspray and it didn't get into all the red but uh this engine to me is obviously not the original Mercruiser engine so they took a possibly the wrong block to, to, to make this mpfi engine i'll dig into that more in a separate video though so i just want to point that out yeah. all right so this block's done um about to take it out put it in a truck um and i'm gonna measure i'm gonna Check the bore condition, see if these bores need to be uh, re-bored or just uh, honed. I'm going to check them with a dial bore gauge, see how much clearance I got, and uh, see if it's possible to just bore them out. I mean, excuse me, to just hone it without boring. But um, I'm going to have to buy new pistons anyway, so might as well just go ahead and bore it. It's only an extra, like, $150 to get it bored. That's it. hope you enjoyed watching this uh, part three or phase three of the teardown. And if you have any questions, uh, put them in the comments. Thanks for watching.